This is Ben Jones, I'm going over ILS landing in the A-10C for DCS World. The ILS system will consist of the flight director bars on the ADI, displaying vertical and lateral deviation from the glide slope, course deviation is displayed on the HSI, and ILS frequency is tuned on the ILS panel behind the tac and panel on the right-hand console. There are a number of ways to obtain the ILS frequencies, one being in F-10 map view. If you select the airbase, we can see ILS frequencies displayed for any available runways. Some airbases, such as Kobe Letty, only have one ILS approach, while others have two, such as Minvoti here. Another method, which we can do in cockpit, is to access the divert page of the nav page of the CDU by pressing function 2, bring up the nav page and selecting divert, at which point you can select the appropriate airbase and any ILS or tac and frequencies will be displayed. Frequencies can also be obtained from the approach and departure charts that are found inside the docs folder in your installation. You can see at the bottom we have both TACAN and ILS frequencies displayed. The first step is to set up the course for the runway on the HSI. For this particular runway, this is 063, so I'll dial it in now. If I call the ATC or check the map, it'll simply display the runway as 07. To get the correct heading, we need to check the charts. Next, I'll dial in the TACAN frequency for the airbase and set it into Transmit Receive and enable the system underneath the HSI. We'll be using the TACAN to guide us on to the approach for the airbase before we enable the ILS system. If you're unfamiliar with TACAN, I recently posted a video covering its use. Though, to make it brief, we're essentially waiting for the course deviation indicator to cross close to our air path indicator in the center of the HSI, at which point we'll know we can make the turn to final and activate the ILS mode. Just behind where we tuned in the TACAN frequency, we can see the ILS panel. It's here where we tune in the ILS frequency for the runway we're landing on. The frequency for Kobe Letty that we need to tune to is 111.50. So we'll tune this in, starting with the left knob, rotating it with the mouse wheel. Next, I'll move over to the second knob, using the mouse wheel again to tune tenths. This will get us on to 111.50. We can see above the knobs that it says volume and power. These knobs serve secondary functions, the left being the power control and the right being volume knobs. If you left and right click on the knobs, you can access the secondary functions. So in this case, I'll turn it to power and adjust the volume. In order to receive updates to the flight director, verify the ADI localizer bar switch is moved from stow to able. This will enable the bank steering indicator on the flight director. At this point, I'm almost at the turn to the approach. We'll see the course deviation indicator slew down towards the aircraft, at which point I'll begin the turn onto 063. As the ILS system provides flight director cues for both pitch and bank, don't stress about cutting the turn too wide or short. In this case, I cut the turn a bit too tight and came out a bit left of the approach course. At this point, I'll activate ILS by selecting the ILS key on the navigation mode selection panel in front of the stick. At this point, the flight director bars on the ADI will show the needed pitch and bank to get the aircraft on the glide slope and keep it on the glide slope. At the moment, it's telling me to bank right and descend a bit, so I'll bank right and cut power. The goal is essentially to fly with the flight director bars forming a cross at the very center of the ADI. At this point, I'm holding the bank steering bar centered up with the ADI. I'm going to hold it there and keep it there. And since I cut power, I'm gradually going to see the pitch steering bar climb up to meet the center of the ADI, at which point I'll increase power and hold it there as well. Then it's simply a matter of keeping the steering bar centered on the ADI until I overfly the marker beacons, at which point I could drop the gear, drop the flaps, and set up for the landing. If you come in too far above or below glide slope, the pitch steering bar may be caged far above or below the ADI to the point where it may not be directly visible. You will see the indexer on the left side, stuck at the top or bottom of the scale. At this point, it's simply a matter of flying the glide slope, so I'll cut ahead a bit. At this point, once I hit an altitude of about 1500 feet, I'm going to drop the gear, drop my flaps, and prepare the aircraft for landing. Landing speed will depend on a few factors, including aircraft weight, and environmental factors such as headwind. In this particular example, I have no wind values whatsoever, and I'm going to land at a speed of about 130 knots. In this example, we have good visibility and we can see the airbase all the way out when we started the approach, though generally you will have no visibility when you're conducting an ILS landing. But it's at about this point when you would begin to see the lights of the airbase come into view, and you could decide whether or not to finish the landing. 
At this point I overfly the outer marker beacon and I decide I'm on good course for landing so I continue through with the landing. Due to the short runway length you'll encounter in the Georgian area of the map, I'm going to set up the landing to land on the threshold of the runway as opposed to following the glide slope all the way down which would set me up about halfway into the runway. The indexer to the left of the HUD, underneath the accelerometer, is an indexer altitude, altitude. for angle of attack. This point is telling me to increase angle of attack, so I'll decrease speed and bring the nose up, at which point we'll see it center up with the circle, indicating I have a desired angle of attack for landing. This point is we overfly the inner marker beacon. We can see our angle of attack is good for landing. We're centered up with the runway. Our gear is down and our flaps are down, so we can continue through with the landings and set the aircraft down. So at this point I'll hold my angle of attack until I'm just about to set down, then I'll flare and let the aircraft set itself down on the runway. Generally, we'd hold the nose up and let it aero break down the length of the runway, though this is a very short runway, so I'll slowly pump the brakes on and off, on and off, until I slow myself down to prevent myself from rolling over the end of the runway. And with that, that's all there is to landing with the ILS system in the A-10C. So at this point we can disable the system. 